everyone. Welcome um, and thank you for joining us for this very special information session um, for uh, UTMB students about how to use Amboss and during the three month trial um, that we've been, we're very happy to be providing you with. We're going to walk through the platform a bit, tell you a bit about our history, um, and hopefully give you some advice um, and some techniques so that you can quickly figure out how to use it to save you time, um, help you study efficiently, and know how to find the information you're looking for very quickly. And I want to do that today within the context of two particular study goals. The first one being step two CK, especially if you've already developed a bit of a study routine. And the other goal being um, clerkship goals in general, in particular, shelf exams. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Abigail, and I've been working with AMBOSS since we became available for American medical students, um, which is why it brings me great joy to talk to you all about these kind of tips and tricks. Um, and this is my colleague Olivia, and colleague and friend in medical education. <laughs> Thanks, Abigail. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm Olivia. I also joined the team um, after working uh, as a biochemist and a educator um, and have been working with the AMBOSS uh, platform since we launched in the US in 2017. And um, my main goal and role right now is building up the community of medical students who are using the platform. And I primarily run the ambassador program. Um, so let's let's get started, and we can start with a bit of an overview of all that's that's there. If you look on the left hand side, you'll see our three main areas of Amboss. We have a library, a QBank, and an analytics tool, and you can access all of these from this left hand side menu here. And when you first log in, um, after you fill out your profile and you put in your study objective, which is very important, we'll get to that later, um, you'll land on this overview page. And this is where you'll find any question sessions that you make for yourself over time. Um, so you can also always go back and see your progress, redo an old session, um, and, and kind of create a custom, a custom study plan uh, that has a home base here. So I want to show you how to use the, the QBank area to start. And so if you click on this left-hand side, you click Create a Session, you'll land on this overview area of all of the different ways you can create QBank sessions. Um, we have this exam preparation area uh, where you can select your exam that you're working on. So in this particular case, maybe we choose Step 2 CK. And you can choose then a block of questions according to organ system to then start your prep. I really strongly recommend that you go ahead and start with questions quite quickly when you're playing around with the platform. It will give you a lot more to interact with if you've already um, started building a history of questions. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and there's lots of ways to kind of approach that. So uh, this is just one, one way that you can kind of start to dive into questions. You can also go into the custom session area and, um, and sort of create a custom block according to whatever area of knowledge you're working on. Um, I'm going to show you to start uh, how to turn on our exam simulation mode, um, because as you guys know, it's really important, especially as you're getting closer to the USMLE, to practice in the as, as exam-like conditions as you can. So if you choose, for example, this immune system block, um, maybe you want to rename it. Uh, so you could just add like first time uh, here on, on the, the study session name below. You can click on exam simulation mode and click get started. And that will open up one of these 40 question box blocks with a very familiar <laughs> frame um, that I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of at this point. Um, and start to go through the questions. So um, I want to show you now what happens when you, once you make it through a whole block, but rather than go through 40 questions right now in this webinar, I'll take you to um, another session I've previously set up. I have one question left. I've actually flagged a few things um, on the left-hand side that may look familiar also. Um, the purpose of that is for when you're in this session and you want to go back to a question before you exit the block. That's what those flags are there for. OK, so my last question. 
So I'm seeing an overview of the questions I just finished and how I did on that session. You can see I didn't get very many right. If you hover over each individual question, um, you get a little bit of information about um, what topic it was from and how long you took to answer it. But what I really want to draw your attention to is um, this section down here with the recommendations. It's very important you have your study objective set to um, what it is you're working on at that moment. And if you didn't do that in your profile, you can change it um, right here on the analytics. And so on the left-hand side, we're looking at progress. This is going to tell me um, a list of topics, how much of that topic I've completed from AMBOSS, and from AMBOSS's question bank, and also how well I've been doing it. That's where you see the difference in the colors and the amount of the bar that is filled represents the progress. On the right-hand side, these are the recommendations. Now, this is really something special. This is um, based on your progress and your performance, but also based on your study objective and what AMBOSS, um, what AMBOSS knows about how these exams are structured based on the NBME content outlines that are provided to question writers. These help you prioritize what would be worthwhile to spend your time on going forwards, rather than just um, the things you're not doing well on. It's the things you're not doing well on that are also very high yield for the exam and may have a lot of questions covered, um, represented in the, in the exam. Mm. OK, so now that you've just gotten, that, like we said before, it's great to just try some questions and get, get a little bit of history going in the platform. Um, we want to take you back and show you how to set up a more dedicated, um, dedicated question session using the custom session, which Olivia previously mentioned. And this is a place where you can go, especially if you already know a little bit about what you're looking for to study, but also if you want to create a random um, set of questions. But let's do it with a shelf, oh, sorry, with a step 2CK example. So the first thing I want to do in the custom session is choose the exam that I'm working on, step 2CK. That puts sort of a filter on the questions. Um, and then you can narrow it down by a couple of different options, by clinical subject, um, by organ system or symptom, and also by learning cards. And we haven't really gotten into the, the nomenclature of our library yet, but learn, learning cards are um, what we call each topic page. I'll do an example with organ system. For example, cardiovascular system, I want to do questions for step 2CK on the heart and the vascular system. I've been studying for a little while, so, um, but I'm new in AMBOSS, so I will do all questions. Uh, maybe later you would choose between not yet answered or incorrect. I'm going to take off the very easy and easy. You see I have a choice between study mode and exam simulation. We showed you the exam simulation before. Now I'll leave it just at the study mode. And again, you can add a name to the session and modify how many questions you're going to work on right in that moment. And once you press get started, this creates a session. And session is what you see on that when we first showed you the home page. There was a list of all your previous sessions. You can control them, rename them, delete them, start again from the home screen. Um, OK, and now this is one of the parts of AMOS that I think is really special. A lot of the features we've put into our questions. And I'm going to let Olivia take that over. But first, let's go to this was a random question from heart and cardiovascular. I think you guys all know at this point the value of, um, of engaging with case-based questions and starting to build up your profile inside your, your head of what patients can look like and how these symptoms start to color your ability to um, work on your differential diagnostic skills and start to really start to pull out the key parts of a question mm -hmm. stem that allow you to know um, with 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 speed and accuracy, how you need to move forward to answer the question, to make a diagnostic diagnosis, to move on to the next step. So here we have a 48 year old woman. She's brought to the ED. Um, she, you notice that she has a um, a headache, a sudden onset headache since about an hour. She's got some nausea and vomiting. Um, the history shows that her father had a stroke um, at 58. I'm going to just flag that for myself because maybe that part of the family history will come into play as I continue to move through. 
Um, she's got a slight fever. She had some lab values and some other vitals here. If I had more um, lab reference values, I could also just open up this chart side by side and compare against um, reference ranges. Um, and I also noticed that uh, she's, they've done a CT and that she has some flexing of her hips and knees when her neck is flexed when she's in the supine position. And I'm just gonna take a look at the CT. Um, and you know, if you've been through your year of clerkships, maybe you've um, had the privilege of looking at a lot of these already. Um, but if you're just starting, then um, it can be hard to figure out what's a density that you need to be paying attention to. What is a normal, uh, what is the normal architecture of, of the anatomy? What, what am I supposed to be seeing? Because even if we start to train ourselves on, on what we're supposed to be looking at, this, like, this training of the clinical eye really comes um, from experience and from having other people teach you what you need to be seeing. So if I'm looking at this, maybe I notice there's some density on this hand of the side. I know she had this sudden onset headache and she had this nausea and vomiting. So maybe there was um, some sort of impact or some sort of uh, causal, causal reason to have a hematoma that had formed because maybe this is the blood that's pooling um, on, in, the, in the skull. And I, I, I know that if it, if it is a hematoma, a subdural hematoma, then I can make this diagnosis and say, okay, my next best step in management is to perform burr hole surgery. And um, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to keep up the pace. I'm trying to be quick, but I'm also trying to be complete. So I, I go through and I, I um, click on perform burr hole surgery. And this is where some of the, this is where some of the power of the tools within AMBOSS um, come into play to really help you figure out what you should have seen and what you need to, what you need to pay attention to the next time you see a similar case to this one. So if it I'll, wasn't obvious, this was the incorrect answer. <laughs> thank you for clarifying. So this incorrect answer um, that I'm showing you now, you'll notice that even though um, it's incorrect, it has a uh, it has an explanation in it that is very specific to this question itself. So um, Again, it's calling into play, okay, so we knew that for a subdural hematoma, burr hole surgery would have been indicated. But the reasoning from why this is not the case for this particular patient, we can look at a CT of what a subdural hematoma should have looked like. And if we turn on the overlay here, we can actually see the midline shift to the right. We can see what this pooling of blood should have looked like, what that density would have, would have appeared as. And if we compare this again to the CT in the scan, we don't see any of this density here. We see no midline shift. And we can even actually turn on the overlay here and see what we are supposed to be paying attention to in this CT that's in the stem. And you'll notice some, if you turn it again it off, you see, okay, this density here, um, in these, and this particularly here in the subarachnoid cisterns, this is where I should have been paying attention. So if you go back up to the question, you can see that there's some different colored highlights. These bright yellow highlights are something that you can turn on and off even before you answer the question or you make a guess by clicking on this highlighting tool. And this flags the points within the question stem that are the key features to be paying attention to, to be able to answer the question correctly. So I was right in thinking that this sudden onset headache was important, this flexing um, of, the, of, of the hips and knees, but this stroke, this family history part, this was a, an, a detractor that was thrown into the stem. So something I didn't need to, to spend time highlighting or paying attention to. You'll also notice we have this tool that's our, our so-called attending tip. And this will give you often a, a push in the right direction as if you had um, an attending or a, a resident with you explaining, guiding you through this sort of Socratic method of, of how to get to your next step of your question. The attending tip will never give you the answer, um, but if you do have a two-step question, as is very typical um, when for prepping with the, for the step two exam, this may give you the diagnosis so that you can then continue to answer um, the question according to the indicated treatment. So if we read this tip, we see, um, again, that the, it was these uh, subarachnoid cisterns, this hyperdensity there, suggesting a subarachnoid hemorrhage. So if I then um, 
know that, ah, okay, so for a subarachnoid hemorrhage, the, the, the indicated next step in management would be perform surgical, cl surgical clipping. I can then click on that. You'll notice it's green for correct. Um, and you get another specific explanation to why the surgical clipping is relevant to this particular case. Um, if you can't remember what an aneurysm is, maybe you mouse over, you get a brief little um, description, this abnormal dilation of an artery due to a, a weakened vessel wall. Um, and this is where we try within MS to really bring this sort of efficient studying method in. Hmm. Um, usually at this point, if I wanted to learn more, I couldn't remember what an aneurysm was, um, or I needed a little bit of a reminder on CT angiography, then I would have to go into Google or open up first aid and like re, re, re look at my notes and re-remind myself what that, what that was and what that could be. And then try to decipher whether or not this is, um, a, a source that I could trust. Here, uh, you can, as I showed, just mouse over, get a brief little abstract, but you can also open up the learning card here by clicking on this blue button. But what I'd like to show rather first when this sort of opening up the learning card area is by clicking in every correct answer, you can open up the topic that's related to the question and the STEM itself. So here we open up side by side a, um, a learning card, a topic around subarachnoid hemorrhage. And you'll see these normal categories that you're used to seeing um, pathologies broken down in from epidemiology, etiology to diagnostics and treatment. And this card will open up to the treatment area because this question is about the treatment of subarachnoid hemorrhage. We showed you the exam simulation, which was like the most bare bones way to do questions from the Amboss Key Bank. And now we've shown you how to work through a learning card and up here at the time wrong, and then go back and look at um, all the information presented um, in that mode. As long as I'm up here, one very important thing, save questions to folder. We showed those red flags in the exam simulation mode. And I don't know, there's a lot of limitations with those, don't you think? Mm. Like, you can save the folder, you can save a question, but why are you saving it? What made you flag it? Is it because you guessed? Is it because it was really difficult? Um, is it because you were working on it? just this week, and it's relevant, you want to um, practice it again before you're in the clinic setting. So these question folders give you the option to customize your own folders, um, and you can add questions to multiple folders. Um, you can even create a new one. And this also comes into play later when you're in the custom session section. You can use these folders to create a session, which I just think is awesome. Okay. Um, now I think that we talked about the library in parallel with the QBank, and um, I want to show you a bit more about the library, the library features, how to use the library, and also bring in, um, bring in the, the app for mobile and tablets. Um, going over to the library, I also want to switch gears a bit and start talking a bit more about using Amboss with clerkship and shelf examples. So here we have the library. The library is um, a database of, of medical information that we've um, written, curated from all of the sources that you're already probably familiar with. And the way you can use it is like similar to a textbook. You can um, open up chapters for these topics, for example, surgery, and go through it until you find a topic that you're looking for to read about. And of course, you can also search. Um, a learning card is broken down into segments. Um, you can open them up one at a time or expand the whole card. And you're presented immediately with a lot of information. And that information is in pictures, in graphics, in um, there are videos, um, paragraphs, bullet points. It's also very layered. You can hover over, similar to what we saw in the question, hover over a term to get a, um, a definition um, or a hyperlink to another learning card. And when you don't have a lot of time or you're, um, you're just needing to look up something and you really want to see it in an exam-specific content context uh, without a lot of the background, um, we have a high-yield mode that, that helps really to condense this information into something more digestible um, and focused on exam relevance. So if you turn that on, what happens is uh, we cut out the extra content that you're looking at. It's similar to highlighting, except it actually removes what you don't have highlighted. Mm -hmm. Just 
going to scroll back up to the top. So um, one of the things we'd like to be able to show you as well is how to use the library and the QBank to optimize um, your, your study experience within your clerkship. Um, and what, this is one of the really powerful parts about the library for me is that it's also available on your tablet or on your phone in offline mode. So if you're in the hospital and you're wanting to look up something that your uh, attending or your chief resident is asking you, you can go through, review, come back. Um, it's available if the Wi-Fi is not working. Or if you want to do a few questions in between rounds um, on the side, that's also available to you. So I'm just going to switch over to the app version of the library. And you'll notice these same topical areas that Abigail showed um, when we first opened the library on the desktop version. It's internal medicine, surgery. If I, um, if I click on the surgery, you'll see, again, um, these typical topical breakdowns uh, that we had before. Um, and you can interact with the, the library here in the same way that you would have um, in the desktop. If you go to this home screen, you can search for a topic. So I'd like to just look up um, this subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, learning card that we touched on before when we were doing the questioner from earlier. And if I open up that, that learning card, I can again see my epidemiology, my etiology. And if I click on this expand all button on the bottom, I can again see the whole library in front of me. I can scroll down and I can see this treatment area that I was looking at before. And um, then this is also one of the like one of the really powerful parts about our library being built into our question answers, because if you read something or you're engaged with content that you want to go back to again, it's not only located in the uh, answer description, but also found in the same content in the library. If we open up the, the features here. You can um, again turn on some of the some of the tools to help help your hmm. help smoothen out, I guess, your experience. So we mentioned high yield mode earlier. I'm going to just turn that off, and I'm also going to turn on um, the highlighting tool that Abigail mentioned. So the highlighting tool um, flags the content within the expanded learning card that is uh, linked to questions within our QBank. Hmm and is uh, relevant, ha yell relevant content that is necessary for um, gaining mastery over this USMLE content outline. Um, we can also turn on this uh, learning radar mode. And I'm showing this because I engaged with this question already and I got it wrong. And I think this is one of the ways to dive deeper into, into the learning cards themselves. Because whenever I answer a question incorrectly the last time, the content in the library that's linked to that question will be flagged as red within the library. So if you're going through a learning card and you see some red text, it can be a flag for you to know that, ah, I answered that incorrectly the last time I worked on that content. I should pay a little bit of extra attention to it. You can, again, open up the, the CTs, look at the overlays, and, and as we did in the question stem, and go further. So. Um, I am going to pass it back over to Abigail because I think we'd like to show you how to make some custom content for the, the clerkships. Yeah, going back a little bit to the just the questions. There's also when you were if you wanted to find that exact question you got wrong, you could probably you can easily do that from that learning card point um, too. But back to the desktop version. This is one of the best places to set up a session. Um, in fact, it is the best place to set up a session. You can have questions offline on your apps, but it's important to create those sessions first and download them if you want to use them offline. So we've looked at these tabs before, exam preparation, custom session by organ by symptom. Um, this time I'm going to think about it a little bit more with a shelf exam um, goal in mind. So you can create, um, you use the exam preparation if you want um, a block of questions that have been already kind of curated by us to, to guide you through a specific study topic. So you select shelf medicine, and then you can choose from one of the blocks. Um, we recommend really working through all of these questions uh, in the period of a clerkship to make sure you've covered all of the content uh, that we expect you to be tested on, or that the NBME expects you to be tested on for that shelf. So that's one way to access it. And Again, we've talked about with the custom session, 
Um, it's important to select the exam that you're working on, shelf medicine, and um, work from these, this dashboard to create the session that you, that you want for, um, yeah, for your studies. And we showed you the analytics a bit for one single session, but you can also select study summary, which gives you analytic results um, over different periods of time that you can, you can customize. So let's look at total, for example. And then I'm going to select uh, my study goal. At first, I'm going to put it at surgery here just to show you guys an example. So here we have a set of uh, recommendations and progress related to the surgery shelf. And even though the questions are coming from the same bank and they're separated by, I mean, you'll work on different questions between the topics, but sometimes there's overlap. You have a top recommendation here for blunt trauma, burns, et cetera. If I switch to medicine, which is really my actual current goal, remember we had the blunt trauma, burns, I get a different set of recommendations. Even though my progress, my history is the same, it's based on the exam relevance um, for the shelf. And from here, you have the possibility, um, like all good digital platforms, to click this topic and go directly into the learning card um, and read some more about it. And that kind of brings, I think we've been in about two loops of the platform from question to learning card, learning card to question, and back and, back and forward again. Um, and that's one of the things that really um, we imagine people, students using AMBOSS is um, as a comprehensive platform that kind of works with wherever you are um, and whatever you're doing at that moment. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the last thing I need to show you is just some account logistics, um, especially for, uh, for accessing the three months free that we've worked together with your school to bring to you. That's gonna be in your account settings. And go ahead and click, you click redeem code and you come to this access chooser section of the platform. And for you, um, you'll need to go to the campus license section and select your school from the drop dropdown. Um, it'll then ask you to authenticate your, that you're a student or faculty at the school by putting in your utmb.edu email address and you'll receive a confirmation email and have to click one more link. Um, and then your platform will um, be open to you for until October 31st. Mm -hmm. um, the activate code section here, I'll just mention, if you are, if when you extend access and you don't have a trial from your campus or um, you've made a purchase, this is where you can put in that access code um, for whatever amount you've, uh, you've bought for yourself, for example. And if you and if you you might be familiar with how the shop looks before, maybe you guys have been here already. But if you just click here, you can go to our our shop, mm -hmm. and um, you can see the different packages that we have available for students. For example, if in the future you wanted to get another three months plus, you could um, click here on on this product, and it would bring you to to our shop page. So I'm just gonna quickly go back. Okay. Send Thank you. Your select access. Thanks. Um, and when you do make a purchase, then as Abigail said, you would then plug this code and activate it here. Or send us an email at, um, at our support channels. We have really kind human beings who are ready to help you with any of your questions. Yeah. Um, also about the platform. And if you ever do have any very specific feedback about something in the line of the content, just take a look at the interface. There's little feedback spots everywhere for you to um, leave a comment or a suggestion. Yeah, so I guess right now we'd like to open up the, the floor to some questions and answers. Um, some of our team members in New York are ready to go to give you some, um, some feedback and some extra tips if you have anything that you would like some clarification on. If you don't have the chat bar already open on the side of your screen, you can, you can do that and write your questions directly on we look forward to hearing from you and we thank you very much for um, being a part of our community. <laughs> thank you.